Welcome back to the Sports Magazine. We continue with football. The Jamaica Football Federation has reportedly settled its contract dispute with the Reggae Boys. Sportsmax.tv is reporting that the parties have signed a deal that expires in 2023 and covers the next two Gold Cups, the Nations League, FIFA World Cup, and international friendlies. That article is available for viewing at Sportsmax.tv. Go and check it out. Joining us now is the JFF boss, Michael Ricketts. President Ricketts, how are you? Good afternoon, sir. Well, I do have much to be thankful for, sir. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Uh, we are doing well ourselves right here. What, 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 what is it that you have to be thankful for insofar as the relations with your key stakeholders are concerned, the players? Because we are teachers and our players reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> yeah. so we are reunited and it really gives a good feeling. Yeah. Um, give us an idea of some of the key things because guess what? Everybody heard what the players were asking for, the 7,000. Everybody heard what the JFF said it could afford to pay. As yet, nobody can confirm what the agreed rate is. Can you shed some light on that by giving us that number I and giving us some other highlights? I have committed, George, not to disclose, not yet, until the contracts are signed. Um, they are now in the domain of most of the players. So until they have signed the contracts, then we um, have decided not to make the information um, free. So we are holding on a little bit on that. But certainly, as soon as um, it is correct to do so, you will be first to know, my friend. When, when, wh wh what is it that the JFF has, has asked for? Is it that there must be... That, that a certain percentage of the boys must sign, like say, all right, if we get 75%, it's a go, or everybody has to sign, or is it that because it's individual contracts, so Michael Ricketts on one, George Davis on one, I have to sign my contract for that. Is that how it works? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Each player um, in a pool of, I think it's 50, um, will have to sign. And certainly down the road, um, there could very well be addition. So if the coach thinks um, later on, he wants to bring in two or three more players, then they will have to sign the contract as well. Mm -hmm. But it's something that will be signed on an individual basis. Right. Insofar as the collective bargaining aspect of the relationship between the JFF and the boys is concerned about, though, and I'm talking about things that can be signed by the boys' representative group on behalf of everybody else, is there any such provision in this agreement and has that been agreed by the group representing the boys' interest? No. Um, it, we are, are still, the agreement is that each player, once you get invited, you'll be presented with a copy of the contract and then you will sign as being part of this contractual arrangement. As it relates to the negotiations, um, the lawyer, Mr. Robert Taylor, actually represented the players and of course um, he would have been instructed by the key players as to what to agree to the last issue we had was that the players were insisting that they uh, wanted 40 percent of of whatever would have earned from both the gold cup and the world cup and we really had to insist that we could not afford to give them 40 percent we started at 15 and then we went 20 and they, they eventually agreed at 20. So um, that's where it is now. I think um, all parties are now comfortable with what's on the table, and um, they are now in the process of, of adding their signatures to these contracts. Great. W one more thing before, before, before Lance takes over, Michael Ricketts. Based on where you are now and the state of the JFF's finances, between now and when this contract period at the boys end, and we understand it's late 2023. Can you tell us which month in 2023 it expires? Um, it expires just around when the life of this administration expires. And that's the end of 2023. So, so December 2023? Hmm. Yes. Good. Yeah. All right. Between now and December 2023, have you done, has the JFF done a projection on the amount of revenue from all of the sources that it hopes to take in between this point and then? Do we have an idea of that, a number? Well, the, we, we have a very, very competent um, finance committee headed, of course, by Dennis Strong. And, of course, we will be unveiling a brand new fundraising model that um, is being drafted right now. And um, some very interesting persons um, will be part of, of this 
organization, this group, this company. This will be made public very soon, and um, certainly um, it's going to really be very interesting to see what they have to offer. So, so your revenue projection you're saying will be in that, uh, uh, in, in that information that is shared with the public, that revenue Absolutely. projection will be in there? It, it will be, George. It okay. will be for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, President Ricketts, there yes, were stories coming out over the past week that Theodore Whitmore, the national head coach, played a role in, in, in settling this standoff between the JFF and the players. Was, 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 is that factual? Well, the truth is that um, we, from day one, we've been asking the coach to make an arrangement, and each party must abide by what we would have added our signatures to. So very interesting going forward. All we need to do now is to concentrate on football and just execute when we get on the field of play. Yeah. And just before you go, we're less than three months for the start of the CONCACAF Gold Cup, President Ricketts. Um, can you give us an idea of what happens between then and now far, as far as preparation is concerned because of the COVID-19 pandemic, things haven't gone as planned. So, you know, we, we anticipate some hurdles, some hurdles. Well, of course, but um, what's, what's encouraging is that it's not entirely unique to us. Um, the only thing that we would have been in a disadvantage of position is that most of the other countries are actually playing football, while we aren't. But based on preparation, we are looking at um, the window in June. We are almost on the verge of signing a contract for having a game, and maybe two games. We're trying to get two games. Um, this year will be in the June window. Between now and then, we'll definitely try to have some camps. Um, we're looking to have one maybe in, in, in England and certainly one here. But um, we are depending on, on, on Coach Whitmore and his, his support staff to, as best as possible, help, help us to navigate this, this hurdle caused, of course, by, by the pandemic. Last thing to, before we go, uh, President, uh, I, I sensed the frustration in a statement issued by you last week talking about the withdrawal of Portmore United and Waterhouse from the CONCACAF Caribbean Club Championships, and you spoke about the fact that the rest of the region and the rest of the world seems to be moving on with their sport and their football, and Jamaica is still stuck in neutral. I know you're a man who has friends in high places. Uh, have you made those frustrations known to our Minister of Sport and other government officials whose hands are on the levers of power? Well, George, I think every single Jamaican ought by now understand how frustrated I am. But um, we're still hopeful, we're still optimistic. We want to get even three months of, of playing football. And we're still um, waiting on, on, on what that document that is called a no objection letter. Um, once we get that, the PFJL is ready. In fact, a, a fixture has already been done by the competition department of the JFM. So we are ready to go. Once we get the green light, then we just hit the track. Right? Uh, have, you, have, you, have you voiced your frustration directed to power, though, President Ricketts? Have you, have you uh, told have, the minister course, that, look? We, certainly. Certainly. We have had discussions with um, all the three ministries involved, local government, health, and, of course, um, sport. But at the same time, we have to understand that, the, especially the Ministry of Health, has a responsibility to protect the health and well-being of, of not just athletes, but the entire nation. So we are understanding, but at the same time, we are very frustrated. But we're still hopeful and very optimistic that soon, sooner rather than later, we'll get that no objection document. Very well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that... having me, gentlemen. Yeah, that's the JFF president, uh, Mike Ricketts, there speaking with us. And Lance, it mm. is, well, I'm, I'm excited there at the end to know that a fixture, has, a fixture list has been done up. We, we may need to call in a few favors to our friends to have a look at that, to see what it looks like. <laughs> to, to, the most important thing for me from that fixture list is the duration of the competition that they're planning to have. Yes. Because it can only be like a knockout format, because you can't have a league competition between now and uh, say June or mid July, it, it, that, that's that's not really unless you're going to have just one-off games. Yes. But I'm keen to see that fixture list to see how long the competition is being forecast to last for. Yeah, very keen, and we understand that there is some division in the stakeholders too about you know what should happen for the season. I gather most teams feel that it's better to have a, a, a 
you know, a shortened season, a condensed season than none at all. But some, including the humble and boss Mike Henry, feels that this season is done and dusted, forget about it, and focus on a new season 2021-22. But in one respect, it's a no-brainer. If there is a shortened season, there is funds released to the clubs. Yeah. If there's no season, there's no funds released to the clubs. So most clubs will want... If it's even a one week, uh, well, <laughs> something, a, a weekend of football, just to put some money in the coffers, we gotta go. <laughs>